Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we have so much incredible news to get through and we're going to begin with the Book of Boba Fett. On May the 4th, Star Wars Day which is just two weeks away, we're getting a Disney gallery for the show, just as we did for The Mandalorian's first two seasons. It's expected to be a single episode special, covering behind the scenes of chapters 1 to 7. It was Jordan Mason from Cinelinks who broke the news and stated this is what we can expect on Star Wars Day. Now the description reads as follows, Disney Gallery The Book of Boba Fett explores the behind the scenes story of the legendary bounty hunter's return to Tatooine with mercenary Fennec Shand seeking to claim the territory once run by Jabba the Hutt. In this insightful new special, filmmakers, cast and crew reveal never before seen footage, groundbreaking technology and the practical effects that brought it all to life. Now this announcement comes as a very big surprise, continuing the trend of Disney gallery specials. As I said, there have been three for The Mandalorian, one for the first season and then two for The Mandalorian's second season. And they've all boasted fun looks at behind the scenes, the process of directing and producing, and of course, juicy interviews with the creators and cast. It has now been two months since the Book of Boba Fett completed its run on Disney+, Plus, and incredibly the series finale broke viewership records. The series split time between the past and present, giving fans a look at how Boba survived after the Sarlacc pit. Now the show received mixed reception, but many fans want a season 2, myself included, and the viewership success of the series proves that we're probably going to get one. I personally can't wait to see behind the scenes and hopefully we'll get some interviews with Dave Filoni, Robert Rodriguez, Tomoe Morrison, Ming-Na Wen and John Favreau. And overall we're going to see how they brought season 1 to life. And even more than that my dear Meglorians, I'm eager to see if they're going to address the change of course for chapters 5 and 6 which were focused on Mando and Grogu's story. And who knows, in that Disney gallery there might be a small tease for either a second season or for what's in store for The Mandalorian season 3 which as we know is releasing before the end of this year. Although any kind of announcement is much more likely to come during the Mando Plus panel at Star Wars Celebration. Now Boba Fett underwent many changes after the Sarlacc pit. He had lighter motivations and gave up being a bounty hunter and it was kind of a rebirth for him. This is something I'd love to see Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni explain in the creative process for the series. Some of the best moments in last year's Disney gallery The Mandalorian Season 2 involved Tomoe Morrison goofing around on set and surely there is going to be more where that came from in this special. Now production for the series brought its share of difficulties. The crew had the unique experience of shooting Boba during the height of the pandemic, but that didn't stop Tomoe Morrison and Ming-Na Wen from dropping some pikes. There is a lot to be explored in this gallery. Not to mention Luke Skywalker once again being brought back, not by Max Lloyd Jones, but by Graham Hamilton. So two weeks to the day, May the 4th, Star Wars Day, Disney Gallery, The Book of Boba Fett. I can't wait. And so now my dear friends, another massive piece of news that dropped, Amy Hennig and Skydance New Media are creating a new Star Wars game. Skydance New Media today announced a collaboration with Lucasfilm Games to develop and produce a narrative-driven action-adventure game featuring an original story in the Star Wars galaxy. Now we don't know when this is going to be set, but a brand new rumour overnight came out that stated that this game is going to be based on the Rebel Alliance. Now helming Skydance New Media is award-winning writer and director Amy Hennig, a game industry legend, whose credits include the blockbuster series Legacy of Kane, Jack and Daxter, and of course Uncharted, popular with Star Wars fans who see similarities with Jedi Fallen Order. Now when speaking on the subject of this new game, this is what Amy Hennig said, I've often described how seeing Star Wars in 1977 essentially rewired my 12 year old brain, shaping my creative life and future indelibly. She went on to say, I'm elated to be working with Lucasfilm Games again to tell interactive stories in this galaxy that I love. And Lucasfilm Games Vice President Douglas Riley stated, we couldn't be more thrilled to be working again with Amy. She and the Skydance New Media team have the talent and ambition to create a unique Star Wars adventure. She had previously worked on a game Game which was cancelled and that was known as Project Ragtag. But with EA no longer having exclusivity rights, Star Wars gaming is now truly on an upswing. And Amy sounds keener than ever before to give it a second go. And with this game announced, 
there are now eight new Star Wars games in development. Star Wars Eclipse by Quantic Dream, and while that game has faced a lot of delays, Bespin Bulletin came out and said, it's not as bad as we think. Then of course we have the Knights of the Old Republic remake by Aspire, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order 2, an open world game by Ubisoft, a first person shooter by EA and Respawn, a strategy game, Star Wars Hunters, and now Amy Hennig and Skydance New Media's upcoming game. Great stuff there and I've seen the fandom is buzzing and super hyped for this. And so finally my dear friends, Hayden Christensen has opened up about what he's done in preparation for Obi-Wan Kenobi. And this is really important because as we know he's not just going to be Darth Vader in the current timeline but also Anakin in flashbacks. In a new interview with Entertainment Weekly, Christensen spoke about how he binged some of the animated Star Wars offerings in order to re-familiarize himself with the universe that made him a star. And he was pleasantly surprised to see just how much the series expanded since his time in the franchise. Namely, after re-watching the entire Skywalker saga once again, episodes 1-9, to nine, he chose to catch up on both the Clone Wars and of course Star Wars Rebels, which both contributed some of the most engaging and satisfying moments in recent Star Star Wars memory, not the least of which involved the relationships between Anakin and Obi-Wan and Anakin slash Vader and his old apprentice Ahsoka. And Christensen said, quote, it was interesting. They did a lot with these characters in those shows and they did further explore the relationship. There was interesting stuff there to learn about. It was great fun getting to go back and re-immerse yourself in this world that just continues to grow and become more and more vast. Now naturally, as you would expect, Christensen was not the only person who brushed up on Star Wars lore. While he went above and beyond to watch the animated shows, both he and Ewan McGregor also separately ran through not just the Star Wars prequel trilogy, but all nine movies. This was the first time that Ewan McGregor had rewatched the prequels since they were first released, and Ewan says that it was so much better watching them this time because there was not all the controversy and noise surrounding them. It's great to hear that both of them have been catching up. It's certainly understandable that a lot has changed since those days, even if the films themselves are still the same. The fan reception and discourse has changed for the prequels, and McGregor admits he much prefers it this way. Making a series for those fans of the prequels who were kids back then, who are now all grown up and are eager to see more of his character and of course, more of Hayden too. We are now just a month and a week away from Obi-Wan Kenobi dropping on Disney+. Plus. Super exciting and I love tidbits like these. Now before I go guys, I just want to say if you've not done so already, go and check out yesterday's video because I had an exclusive scoop for the Andor series. But with that said my dear friends, that brings us to the end of this Star Wars news update. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and a massive welcome if you are. And if you want more videos that you can't find here on YouTube, like Lego Star Wars gameplay and commentary then click the link down below but until the next one guys may the force be with you always i'm star wars meg have a good one